Hello, my name is Tom DuPont, and I'm with CodeSmith Tools. Today I'll be taking you through our quick start for our nHibernate templates. nHibernate is an open source ORM project that we have created templates for. Our templates will generate business entity objects, manager objects, um, nHibernate mapping files, and unit tests for nHibernate. So everything you need to get going real quickly with that. So the first thing we're going to need to do is locate our nHibernate templates. Now if you have installed CodeSmith, then you should have a CodeSmith folder in your My Documents. And if you go to the path of CodeSmith, Samples, 5.0, Templates, Frameworks, and Hibernate, and then in this case C Sharp, you'll have our templates right there. However, also you can always get our latest um, revisions to our templates from our Google Source Repository. And that is what I'm going to do for this demo to make sure we have the latest stuff. So it's just codesmith.googlecode.com and then the appropriate directory, which should pretty much match what we talked about earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and get the latest there. All right, now that I have that, I'm going to open up the readme file because that has our quick start in it. And we're pretty much going to go through this step by step, and then when we're done, we're going to do a... Uh, brief run through of how to use what has been generated. So let's start with creating a new Visual Studio project. Now I already had Visual Studio open, so I'm going to go and create a new project. Now I'm going to create a C Sharp class library so that we can reference our data layer from any project we want later. Now I'm going to call this PetShop.data because I'll be generating from the Pet Shop database that comes with CodeSmith. Okay, so step two is to add a new CodeSmith project to our project. So let's do that, add new item. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, we're going to see CodeSmith project. I'm going to name this nHibernate, but we can name that whatever we like. Okay, now we have to add an output. So we have to select a template for this output. Now with our nHibernate templates, there's only one template you need to reference, and that is the nHibernate master, and it will reference all the other sub-templates and take care of calling and configuring them for you, which I think is pretty convenient. So the first thing we need to do here is choose our source database. Now I'm going to select Pet Shop. Let's make sure this is the right database. I have attached the Pet Shop database to my local SQL server, and that's what we're going to connect to. Test successful. And once we have selected that, we now have plenty of options to configure. First is excluded tables. This will exclude um, any tables you wish from being generated with the uh, results. So I'm going to go ahead and exclude account, just for an example here. So we'll generate nothing to do with the account table. The next is the table prefix. This would strip off any prefixes you have on your tables, such as the ASP.NET membership tables have ASP underscore as a prefix. This would strip that off, but we don't have that, so we don't need to worry about it right now. Uh, next, we select nHibernate version, which we can generate for 1.2 or the recently released 2.0, so we'll generate for the latest. Next, we have a Visual Studio version, and that's either 2005 or 2008. The key difference here in these templates is whether or not you get partial methods in your business entities. So we'll do 08 to get those methods. Next we have to specify our assembly name, and I did PetShop.Data. And then our namespaces, I'm going to go ahead and rename these to keep them consistent with the assembly. However, leaving them as nHibernate.something is also convenient, because then they will match with all the other nHibernate references in your project later. And then we have a keywords option here, and this is for when you need to create mappings to ensure that compiler keywords don't get generated from your uh, database. But we don't have to worry about that with this simple database, so I'm going to leave that blank and move on. Okay, so now our CodeSmith project is uh, added. So next on this is to, well, I guess we already did the next step. So next we have to create or update our app config to use nHibernate. So I'm going to copy the sample app.config right here because this has the nHibernate mapping in it and it's all we're going to have in this particular 
um, application configuration. So again, we're going to add a new item, add app config, and I'm just going to go ahead and paste this whole thing in here. Now we have to update our assembly name again, which is again pet shop data, and we have to add a connection string, which I'm just going to copy and paste in there. So we're going to save that. Okay, the next thing is to right-click and generate, and then we're going to go ahead and compile. So we're going to generate our outputs. This is where the magic happens. Okay, notice that this uh, project has gone ahead and added, this CodeSmith project has gone ahead and added our references, such as nHibernate and nUnit, to the project. It has created our base classes, our business objects. Notice there is no account object because we told it to um, skip that table. Notice that with Visual Studio 08, we now have these partial methods. So we also have our nHibernate map files, our manager objects, and our unit tests. So let's compile this, see if it works. And one succeeded. So now let's go ahead and run unit test against this. Oh, I don't have test driven installed. So, one moment. Okay, during that brief interlude, I went and installed test driven. So now we can just come and right click, test with, and unit. Now, not all of these tests are going to succeed. Um, as you'll note in our documentation, known issues, unit tests require that each table in the database have at least one valid row. But so long as some succeed, we'll know that uh, we are using what we've generated within Hibernate to hit the database. And sur sure enough, we are. So, we have generated, and we have a working data layer. So let's move on to um, learning some of the, bas the basic uses of what we've generated. Okay, so this is really important. This shows just how easy it is to use what we've just generated. We're going to come to our solution. We're going to add a new project. I'm going to make a console application. Of course, this could be any .NET or CLR compliant project. I'm going to call it PetShop.Demo. Now, all we have to do is add our project reference to PetShop.Data and add in an app config which in this case I'm just going to copy over from the other project. And that's it. This project is now set up and ready to use in Hibernate. It's that quick and that easy. Now I've written some example methods. I'm just going to go ahead and copy in here to the void main. So let's go over this real quick. We've added some new using statements to use patchup.data. And then in our main, we're just con doing console out, and then we're going to jump straight into example one. And example one is going to be a very basic proof of concept. We are just going to initialize a f manager factory, and from that we're going to create a product manager. Then we're going to read a pro product out of the database. I've been saying project, I'm sorry, product. We're going to create a product manager and read a product out of the database, display its initial values, save them, update them in the database, see that they've been updated, and then restore them. So let's go look at the database real quick. So we're going to get um, product ID BD02, which is a penguin, guaranteed to stay by your side, and he is associated with the category of birds, which has the name of birds and a description of birds. So what we should see here is all that information displayed here, and then we should change the name of that product to Oswald Cobblepot, a great villain, and we should see that change as well. So let's run this project. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to set this as my startup project. Okay, let's press enter, get going. Okay, sure enough, we pulled back Penguin, guaranteed to stay by your side, and associated values of birds and birds. So that was real easy. And if we go look at the database, it should now be changed to Oswald Copplepot, a great villain. And indeed it was. So, if we press enter again, that should have restored the initial values to the database, and it did.